to make a decision. And so how do you do this? You, you, you get up in the morning and say, Heavenly Father, I prophesy that this day is going to be a great day. And Satan, I command you by the power of the Spirit of God to have no authority against me and against anything that I, that I own. And by your spirit. I remember my dad used to go around the house spitting everywhere. And I really, really thought my dad was crazy. But he was saying, Satan, you have no authority here. You have no authority on this car. You have no authority there. And he begins to sort of, a, you know, he was famous because when he is Bible, every picture of my dad, the finger of authority is inside of the Bible. He's like this. And so I asked dad, can you carry the Bible like this like everybody else? says, no, son, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. You, you've got to be ready. You've got to take authority. What does that mean for, for us? Is that my dad had this thing in his mind that he was battling for his soul continuously. He's not paying attention about bills and about this and about that and how is it. You know, he, <laughs> let me tell you a funny story. I have a, a house that has a large bedroom, about, I'd say about from here to there with a bathroom there, bedroom there, and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, our bed right here, and, and, uh, and, but there's a problem there. It's dust. And so lately, I've been reprimanding the dust because it's a lot of dust. I've done everything. Listen, listen, I've taken the part of interior there. I've taken the, 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 the guys with the vacuum cleaner there. I've taken the guys to change all the, the pipes out there. I put a new whatever there and a new whatever there. With 15 years, I've been battling that dust for about at least, at least 15 years. And every three days, you can write your name on the floor. Every three days. Every three days, you can write Rick on the floor. It's that bad. I've, I've gone into the floor, the, uh, the up there, and I've looked every single pipe. I've cleaned the, the metal piece. I secured that with special, special uh, glue, and I've done everything. I've done everything. So in the next last three or four weeks after Mary Lucy went to Brazil, I began speeding on the floor. I'm telling you how I arrived to where I got the victory, because I got the victory now, okay? I got the victory. I, I got the dust under my feet, okay? So I'm going around the floor. In the name of Jesus, you dust. I command you have no right. I command you demon of hell. You've been bothered 15 years. Like a crazy man speaking loud to a point to where the guy who came <laughs> uh, from UPS <laughs> began... <laughs> He, he delivered the box and kept on going. <laughs> There's a crazy man out there in that house. So I'm walking around uh, a place called Bath and Beyond. You know, I don't know why I went there, but my sister says, when you're really, really, really bored, because I'm not here, go to Bath and Beyond. Okay? I want to see what Bath and Beyond is. I mean, you're talking about stuff. They're loaded with stuff. I mean, they got one of, a thousand of each one of them staring at you. The place is rigged to spend money. Of course, I didn't want none of them. I don't want buy nothing. Nothing there appeals to me. And so I'm watching and passing by. I'm watching and passing by. My, my glass was not, was not working proper, so I had to hold like here because it broke in the middle. So I'm, uh, I was going to put a little white little thing there. And, I, uh, uh, and Betty said, if you do that, I'll leave your ministry. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I got, got there and I began to look and I saw a little white little machine about this big about this big and I said can you tell me what the machine does oh sir that machine has a cubic that goes right here you put a pad underneath and it mops your whole place and it cleans everything in less than 10 minutes and it's fast and it bleaks and beeps and I put her on, closed the door. I said, Lord, bless God. I need help. I came back five minutes later, and the place is shining. <laughs> Meaning, all that little fellow does is get the dust. And I take the pad, throw it away, put a new pad, and it cleans. Wet and cold, whatever that is. I think it's Mr. Mint. That's his name. <laughs> Mr. Mint. And Mr. Mint, now there's more, no more dust. You understand? What I mean is, is that if, if, if you want to be uh, those who will come to taste the goodness of God, you're going to have to be creative. 
You're going to have to come to exaggeration of your faith. You're going to have to say, in the name of Jesus. You're going to have to do a little jumping. You're going to have to speak loud. You understand? Some of us are so passive, so quiet, we don't say anything. And you're going to have to do that. And so, for false Christ and prophets will appear and, and perform signs to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. In those days, following the distress, following tribulation, the sun will darken. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Now you say, Rick, who's going to see? But isn't the first coming of the Lord Jesus in the, in, the, in the clouds as he will gather? Let's take a look at Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And those of you who are joining us uh, through, uh, through, the, through the Internet, it's about six or ten people that uh, from somewhere coming there joining us. I want to tell you that this Bible study was this morning's Bible study, and I'm extending and enlarging a little bit. But it says, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, you will gather unto Jesus those who are dead first and those who are alive second. You will join him in the clouds. And then you will come back, Zechariah 14. We're going to stay in Jerusalem at a hotel called Seven Arches. Seven Arches is on the top of the Mount of Olives, right at the top. If you look the other way, it's Bethany. Looking down is where Jesus will come. The Kidron Valley, the city of Jerusalem, and the eastern gate. Right, right there. Amen? Uh, <laughs> it would be hard to sleep because all we're going to do is look at the window and say, Lord, I want to take a picture of this because I know you're coming back right there. Okay? And so... This first coming in which you meet him in the air is not the second coming. The second coming is when he returns seven years later at the Mount of Olives with his saints and his, his angels in power and glory. So who will be the men that will be looking up? Since everybody already has come up to Christ. Those who will be looking up are those who, who, are, who are under, the, under the, 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 the tribulation have been saved by the 144,000 uh, evangelists or whatever. Because during the seven years of tribulation, God will come in power. Elijah will walk the city of Atlanta. Moses will be in New York City. In the, in the Middle East will be filled with saints of God preaching and, 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 convert, and asking people to repent. You see, the heart of God is that powerful. It will, not, it will not give up even during the tribulation to bring those who resisted the Lord of glory. And there will be a time in those days when, when, the, when the, you're going to see people kneeling down and asking to be saved. By the way, now listen to this. I want to speak. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory. It won't be you. It will be the leftover with great power and glory. What, what is power? He's coming to judge. The second coming is coming to judge. Now, who are those he refers to here as the second verse? He says, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds from all the earth, from the four winds from the ends of the earth, to the ends of the heavens. That's a second, second resurrection. So the first, it's got to be for people who go to Bible studies. <laughs> the, second, the first has to be for those that, uh, that love the Lord and are crazy about Him. For people who have spent all their lives preaching the gospel and being ridiculed and put down and harassed. The first has to be for those who died at the sword and lost their necks like John the Baptist to proclaim the kingdom of God. For those, for the first one has to be for those who, who, who lived uh, in poverty in order to preach the gospel to thousands and give their lives gladly 
to be a service of the kingdom. And then the rest of them come up. And of course, I want to be in that first resurrection, don't you? That's why we have mission trips. That's why we go and we witness. That is why we spend time in the mission field. Why to have a mission that spends all that money? And, and it's because that's our mission. We, we just build a, a, a family of two girls, one boy, and two children. We spend $15,000 there of the ministry money, Bible study money, money that you send in. All of you gave. And we're about to finish the project. It will not fall. It's steady. You've got concrete on the top, concrete in the bottom this deep, and we're going to cover with, with cement and whatever, and all the pipes are there, and running water, electricity, refrigerator, table, furniture, and beds. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a joy. What a joy to sort of love people like that in the name of Jesus. You understand? It's a, it's a blessing to attend all those people at that clinic and give them free medicine. And so... Uh, 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 all of that we do is because we love Jesus. We want to continue to do and to bless others and to minister to others. And you need to join this. You don't want to be a standby, not looking. Those who've been to Brazil, uh, you saw a little bit of it. You saw how God moves in power there. And uh, that's why I think we're involved in missions, is to let you experience the hunger of the lost throughout the world. Now, Learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender, and if you see a tree, you look at the twigs, they're little, they're little soft. You can, you can touch it, and there's a mushiness about it, real tender. And, uh, and its leaves come out very, very sweetly. You can see that little piece of leaf. You know that the summer is near. And then Jesus says, even so, when you see these things happening, you know that that's near, right at the door, meaning it's just the beginning of what's going to happen in this earth. So don't not be worried about the Middle East today and these Muslims that are, that are, that are expressing their anger toward America. Don't, don't you worry about that. Be proud that our soldiers overseas carry New Testaments, that our soldiers witness the love of Jesus to all this crowd. I don't know if you know that, but our military is sending especially sergeants and uh, helicopter pilots to Brazil on our mission trips. Every summer, the number's increasing. And uh, we, I just learned that uh, we're going to have uh, at least 15 of the platoon uh, that is in the Afghanistan this coming June to spend 15 days in Brazil. Why is the U.S. government sending people to a, a little ministry in Brazil so they can get delivered, set free, be blessed, and, and be empowered by the Holy Spirit, you see? And so I don't believe that uh, you need to worry about what's happening in, the, in this crisis throughout the world tonight, especially tomorrow, Friday. You know, hell's going to break loose in there. But the hand of God is upon us. You don't have to sort of uh, be Republican or Democrat. You have to be a Christian full of the Holy Spirit to know that God's got his hands upon the, our country and, and, and America will stand for righteousness and holiness until the end, no matter who the president is. There's no way to change that, okay? There's no way to change that. And you can't take God of your platform either. The Lord is right there on the buck. Now, uh, the dollar bill has, in God we trust, and it's going to remain there. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. And so even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it's near, right at the door. I'll tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Which generation? Which time? What he's referring to? He is referring to the generation that he sees then, right there, that crucified him. He is referring to the generation you are now living, 2012. Heaven and earth will pass away, meaning the heavens will change, the earth will change, but the words of this gospel will never pass away. Remains, is going to continue to remain, is going to continue to stand for what stands. So say with me, say, Heavenly Father. Teach me, Lord, not to be impressed by the problems I have. I'm so connected to performance that because it performs or not, it makes to be a measure of my faith. I'm not performing. I'm not living my life. 
to please the status quo. There will be hell coming. There will be difficulties coming. There will be problems coming. But those to endure at the end will be saved. Lord, I'm not, I don't give up to pray for my family, for my children, that your Holy Spirit will bring healing to them. Heavenly Father, deliver me from living on this mindset that the things I see, the things I have, are more important than my faith. God, I, I turn to you, my very children, and I ask you to minister to them. Heavenly Father, come now, Lord Jesus, by your Spirit upon me. Come, Lord Jesus, upon my life. Begin to call and say, come, Lord Jesus, upon my life. Release me, Lord, from all the pain, all the agony, all the anxiety, all the turmoil, all the nervousness. God, I've been so mad about nothing. I've been so disgusted about nothing. I've been so, in, so enraged about nothing. I've been preoccupied about nothing. God, if my bank account is the status of my faith, Lord, I have put my faith on the, on the, in the evil metal. And Lord, you say in your scriptures that the love of money is the root of all evil. God, so, so do, not, do not let me lose the sight, God, of what you're doing in my life. I profess to you openly, without shame, that you are my Savior, that you died on the cross for me, that you will come one of these days in power and great glory and, and sweep me out of this earth into the heavenly realms and I will see righteousness and holiness and live a life eternal with you. Oh, Heavenly Father, forgive me. I've been short-sighted. Short I confess to you, Lord, that I must be delivered from fear of the future, fear of finances, fear of failure, fear of performance, fear of the past, fear of government, fear of, uh, of lack of insurance, fear of the hospital, fear of being sick, fear of this and fear of that. God, deliver me, Lord. God, I need to be set free. You are my Savior. You're my deliverer. You found me, God. And you saved my soul. Now I want to worship you. I want to love you. I want to adore you. All the days of my life. Come, Holy Spirit. Set me free this evening. I ask you to deliver me tonight, Lord. From everything that causes me to lose sight that what the devil wants is to rob my soul. I confess to you, Lord, that I'm your property. I belong to you. And there'll be wars. There'll be rumors of wars. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be financial turmoil. There will be pain. There will be agony. But if I die, Lord, I die in you. And that's a short time before I come out of the grave and meet you in the air and live with you forever. For you are my Savior. You forgave all my sins. You forgave all my shortcomings. Your blood is sufficient, Lord. And I praise and worship you, God. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Oh, mighty God, I praise you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on my soul, Lord Jesus. That's what I need. I need mercy. Oh, God, I don't want to give you sacrifice. I ask your mercy. I ask forgiveness of my sins. I ask you to deliver me for shame, nervousness, anxiety, turmoil. I ask you, Lord, to bless my life. Those of you watching by the... By the by the, by the screen there, just get up on your house where you are, stand up with you, and begin claiming, say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Come, Holy Spirit of God. Get out of your seat, begin walking around a little bit. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless me, God. Bless my life. Speak loud. Speak loud. Say, come, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father. The Word says, Lord, that only you know 
the coming of Jesus. Not even the angels, not even Abraham, not even Isaac, not even John the Baptist, not even Elijah knows, not even Jesus knows. You know, Father God, what this earth means. And by your spirit, Lord, we pray tonight that every soldier carrying the American flag will have an angel around him. Cover them tonight, Lord. Cover them in the embassies. Cover them, God, throughout the earth. Lord, I don't know why those soldiers died in that embassy, but tonight we ask you to forgive our sins, God. Forgive our sins. Forgive the sins of this government and the government before us. But protect our soldiers, God. Protect those men and women. Protect them by your spirit, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. But God, now is between you and I. I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I confess to you, Lord, that I won't get my life in order. I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Light of the world. You have come. Yeah. 